I'm gonna show you how you can build a Windows service using C Sharp. So some quick information before we actually start the video. Here's the timestamp to go straight to the code. All the code will be available in my GitHub repository, link in the description. And this video isn't going to be a super in-depth detailed video about building Windows services and going into all the nitty gritty details, etc. I've actually linked a video in the description that goes into a hell of a lot more detail than what I'm going to be covering in this video. Um, it goes for about 40 minutes, so it is quite a bit longer. Uh, but yeah, if you guys will actually wanna get more detail about Windows services, go check out that video. So what are we actually gonna be building today? We're gonna be building a Windows service that polls URLs. It's gonna just check whether the URL is online or offline. So it's pretty simple, not too hard. So let's jump into Visual Studio and let's get after it. So let's create a new project. File, new project. And the template we wanna choose is worker service. What we'll see is we'll have a program.cs and a worker.cs. So this worker.cs is gonna be the main business logic or the main part of our actual application here. So this is actually gonna be our Windows service and the logic behind it. We have one method here, an execute async, and there's a just a while loop until cancellation is requested. So this is gonna run forever until the application is shut down. Um, and one great thing about this actual template is it allows for dependency injection. So this logger here is actually a part of dependency injection and is injected into the service. So you can, do, you can do that with all of your other services as well. So let's create a method here. Uh, so async task, and let's just say um, poll URLs, but let's just wrap this in a try catch, try catch finally. So let's just add some logging real quick. So we're just gonna say an error occurred. So now let's actually create a list that our URL is gonna live in. So we're just gonna create a list of strings all that URLs. It's just gonna be a new list of string for the time being. And let's just do HTTPS, google.com. Cool. So now what we wanna do is we just wanna loop through each of our URLs and then we want to, to poll each of them. URL in URLs. Let's actually create a list of tasks. Since we're gonna be making get requests, we're gonna to have to add a NuGet package. So come up to your solution here, go manage NuGet packages, what we're going to be adding is microsoft.extensions.http. Download that. So what that package that we just added is going to give us access to is the iHttp client factory. And this is how we're going to be creating our HTTP client. So since we're going to be polling URLs, I'm going to create another async method here, poll URL. And this one is actually going to poll the individual URL. So to start us off, let's just create a try catch. In this catch, we're just going to log to say that our URL is offline. I'm gonna create a client, HTTP client, using the NuGet package that we just added. So we have our HTTP client factory. And we're going to create a client, and then we're gonna have a response. So what we're gonna do is we're going to await client.getAsync, and we're gonna pass it in the URL. And then if our response is a success status code, then we're just gonna to log to say uh, the URL is online. Otherwise, we're just going to log again to say the URL is offline. Back up in our polls, poll URLs method. So we see that we have a list of tasks. So essentially what we're gonna do since we have this URL here, we're gonna add the tasks and we're gonna run them all at the same time. So we're gonna go poll URL and it's gonna be URL. And then what we're gonna do is go task.whenall tasks. So when they all complete, that's when we know we're finished. All we're really doing, we're coming into this method. We're doing an infinite while loop until our application has been requested to stop. And we're just going to poll URLs. So in our poll URLs, we're just going to loop through each URL and add it to a list of tasks. And then we're going to run this in parallel by calling task.whenall. And this is actually gonna be our poll URL method. So it's pretty simple. We're just gonna get a client. We're going to send the request. If our request is successful, we're going to log say URL is online. Otherwise, we're just gonna log the URL is offline. What I need to do is I need to add the HTTP client factory into my dependency injection here. So add HTTP client, cool. Now if I run that, that should work fine. Boom, there we go. Google is online, Google is online. So it's working. 
Okay, this is Future Jono. So when I was actually editing the video, it seemed like I was going a little bit off track. So what I'm actually gonna do is just refilm some stuff and sort of just keep it more directed at focus on the Windows service. So what I'm actually gonna be doing is adding some file logging to our service just to make sure that uh, when we actually start our service, we can actually see that it's running properly and stuff like that. So let's jump into Visual Studio and we'll actually get into the Windows service portion. Let's do it. Okay, so we're in Visual Studio and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some file logging. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to our project and we're going to right click manage NuGet packages, and we're going to search for Serilog. So what we're going to install is serilog.asp.net core. So let's install that. Okay, now that we have that installed, now we can add Serilog to our project. So what we have to do is we need to go dot use Serilog in our program.cs. So in order for us to create the logger, what we need to do is do log.logger equals new logger configuration. Uh, and then what we do is we go dot read from dot configuration. And then we're getting our configuration from our host context. Configuration dot create logger. So we've created our logger and now I just need to add our actual log configuration. And this is just going to be our logger configuration. So if you guys want to read up on Siri log, I've actually put a link in the description to the documentation below if, you'd, if you guys want to have a read. But anyway, let's move on. So if we run this, we should see that our, our logger is now writing to a file and using Siri log. We can see that we have now got a file log, which is writing the same thing, which is what we expect. Now, how do we actually run this program as a Windows service? So this is where this comes into play. What we're going to do is we're going to install a new NuGet package. So let's go to our project, manage NuGet packages, and we're going to search for this, this package right here, microsoft.extensions.hosting.windowservices. It's going to be our top one here, and we're going to install that. So what that NuGet package gives us access to is an extension method to go use Windows service. And it's as simple as that. That's how we actually run our application as a Windows service. So now let's actually publish our application and install it as a Windows service. So let's go to our project over here. Let's go publish. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna choose a folder for this point. Yep, that's gonna be our, our location. Let's go finish and let's hit publish. Okay, awesome. So now what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna open up PowerShell as a as administrator. So this is the command that we're gonna be running to actually install our .NET Core application as a Windows service. So our display name, this is what we're gonna be, uh, this is what our application is gonna be displayed as in our services list. So let's just go my monitoring service, our description, let's just put in as test. So this binary path name is actually the path to the executable for our application. So if we go back into Visual Studio, we'll see that we published our application to this directory here. So let's open that up. And we should see that we have an executable here. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to hold shift and right click on the executable and then go copy as path. So again, that's hold shift, right click, copy as path. Now let's jump back into PowerShell and I'm just going to paste that executable path into here. And then next we have a service name. So I'm just going to call this service again, just my monitoring service. Okay, that's cool. If we hit go, Boom, it says it was completed and our status is stopped so our monitoring service isn't actually running yet. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go back down to our Windows search bar and just type in services. And now this window will be displayed. So if we go down to my monitoring service, we have our my monitoring service and it's currently not running. If I hit start, it says it's running, started, which is great. If we go back to our log file, we should see we now have a log, log file here and it's just running that Google is online. So you've just seen how easy it was to actually build and deploy a Windows service using .NET Core. If you guys are interested, all the code for this video will be in my Git repository, link in the description. And if you like the video, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.